For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I'm a third year medical student and a professional LIMCAT tutor. What you're about to watch today is a small excerpt from one of the lectures in our brand new high yield MCAT e-course. It's around 50 chapters of the most high yield topics on the MCAT. Link is in the description so that you can learn that a little bit more. And this, the study structure can impact how valid your study is or how general, uh, generalizable, and all that impacts the causality. But we'll talk a lot about this causality word because this can, a good understanding of causality can really help us avoid a lot of silly mistakes. So let's talk about observational design. An observational study is one whenever participants are just observed. It's pretty easy. So we observe these participants because it's not very ethical to like manipulate and experiment on humans. Uh, and then we measure their outcome. So we make no direct attempt to impact the outcome. We make no experimental attempt. There are four different types of observational study that we're going to discuss today. And that's case control, cohort, longitudinal, and cross-sectional. So what's really important is not confusing these two. So make sure you pay close attention. Case control is a retrospective study, meaning it's looking in the past, retrospective observational study that compares a group of people with a disease to a group of people without. So I, the way that I remember case control is whenever you have a surgery posted and you hear just like the surgeons chopping it up in the lounge, they say, oh, I got a case to go do. And that means this patient has the disease. I'm going to try to go fix it with surgery. So you have a case, which is a group with a disease, and then you have a control, which is a group of people without the disease. And a good example of this is, do diabetics report more satisfaction than non-diabetics? You have your case, diabetics, and you have your control, non-diabetics. That's case control. Pretty simple. I'm um, just gonna make sure that you are asking yourself the questions, do I have a group with the disease and without the disease. If that's what I'm comparing, it's case control. Cohort study is a prospective. And prospective means it's looking in the future. Observational study, meaning we're watching them, we're not experimenting with them. And we're comparing a group of people exposed to a risk factor. So whereas case control was dealing with the disease, right? So we're focusing on the case. Cohort is dealing with a risk factor. So a cohort of people that are doing risky behaviors and things of that nature. We're comparing those to people who are not exposed. Now, the reason that this is confusing between the two is because you are comparing two groups, one with something that seems like dangerous versus one that does not or versus a control. That's why they're very confusing. But with cohorts, um, I think of this R right here. It reminds me that I'm dealing with a risk factor. So something like smoking cigarettes or something. Um, so if you were comparing those who smoke cigarettes versus those who do not, you're talking cohorts. If you're talking about those with lung cancer versus those who do not, you're talking about case control. A good example of cohort would be the children who grew up within 10 miles of a fast food restaurant. So that fast food restaurant would be our, uh, or 10 miles within that fast food restaurant would be our risk factor. Are they heavier on average when they graduate high school than those who did not? So that's a cohort study. You're just comparing those two groups. Shifting over to longitudinal and cross-sectional, now I changed my brain from comparing uh, the, what, what, what the uh, participants actually have or exposed to. Now I'm looking at timelines. So longitudinal, it's kind of easy because it has the word long in it. So it's an observational study where participants are watched for a significant period of time or a long period of time. Pretty straightforward. So a good example of this would be, is there a long-term correlation between participating in violence in video games and carrying out acts of violence? Now, what I want you to look for if you're trying to decide that something is longitudinal is that researchers are watching for a long time. So if they only check in once, it's not longitudinal. If they check in every three years, that's longitudinal. If they only check in once, then we're talking about something called cross-sectional. When I think of a cross-section, I actually think about CAT scans. So whenever you learn to read a CT scan in medical school, you are going to inevitably get this talk that I've heard from a thousand different people, and it is that a CT machine, the way that it works is it reads your body in these little chunks. So these little, like millimeter sized chunks and you're going to be taught all about how 
that means that we could miss some things and you need to be looking and thinking through all of your anatomy as you're scrolling through those images. But each of those chunks is called a cross section. That's because it doesn't take the whole picture into account. You're just looking at that one slice right through here. Now with cross-sectional uh, experimental designs, you're looking at that one slice in that specific period of time. So let's look at the definition we have in the book. It's a one-time observational study that compares the frequency of an associated risk factor to the frequency of a disease. So it the, the giveaway for me is one time. So even if they're saying, even if they're saying that we are looking at people who have smoked cigarettes for 10 years, a lot of people would want to jump and say, oh my gosh, that's longitudinal because it's a 10 year period. That's a long time period. But no, remember longitudinal means that the researchers have to check in for a long time. Whereas cross-sectional means we're just looking once. If you're just looking once, then you are just taking a snapshot. And the reason that that's important is because if you are doing a cross-sectional analysis, and let's let's take cigarette smoking. If you're doing a cross-sectional analysis of people who smoke cigarettes, and you're trying to see, um, like, if you're trying to look at their lung values and basically measure how well they're breathing, if you're only checking in once, it's pretty likely that you know maybe one out of your thousand participants or more would have like a cold or something that would impact their breathing that they may not have if you were to check in again in another year or so. So. That is why a longitudinal study actually has better validity, better generalizability than a cross-sectional study. But that's what they are. And a good example would be asking the question, do individuals living within 100 miles of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant have cancer at a higher rate than the general population? If you just checked in once, if you're gonna say, do they have it right now? That's cross-sectional. It's very important to us for our residency applications as well as for the pre-med community that we can grow this channel. And we really hope that you will support our journey into matching to the specialty of our choice. And it's an honor that you're watching this video and allowing us to be a part of your path to your MD. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend. Check out the link to the description if you enjoyed the content today for the access to the full high yield course. And we will see you in the next one.